Hello, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Ender 3 V2 3D printer from Creality. So for those familiar with my channel, you know I don't really do a lot of content based around commercial off-the-shelf 3D printers. In fact, this is the first 3D printer that isn't a DIY build in over three years that I've had the chance to print with. The Ender 3 is a highly recommended printer, especially for those that are new to the 3D printing hobby. And I myself recommend getting an Ender 3 as a starting printer. However, I haven't had any firsthand experience on it. I've basically gone off the recommendation of others. So when Banggood reached out to me and asked if there were any products that I would wish to receive to do a video on, I requested they send me an Ender 3 V2. That way I can form my own opinions on the printer and make better recommendations. Now this printer was provided free of charge on the condition that I do a video. However, the words and opinions in this video are my own. Now, first things first, this video will not be a standard review of the printer. I'm going to be going over things that I like and dislike about this printer as somebody who builds 3D printers as a hobby. If you're looking for a full review of this printer, it has been out for a little while now, and there are multiple good reviews out there on the internet, so I recommend you watch those. But if you're looking for a breakdown of some of the pros and cons of this printer and things I like and don't like about it, I definitely recommend you stay through and watch the video. And if you do like it, make sure you hit that like button. Now, I won't be going over a bunch of prints now, while I did do multiple prints on the printer to test out its capabilities, I won't be going heavily into print quality. And the reason for that is right off the bat, this printer prints very well, especially for its price points. Details come out clean, tolerances are very good, and the build quality of the printer itself lends to very good prints as long as you take the time to tune your slicer settings. Now, I printed all the prints on this printer using the newest version of Cura, using default Ender 3 profiles. And once you take the time to tune that default profile to your specific printer, I can definitely see quality improving as well. So let's talk about the printer itself and the things I like and dislike. So what we'll do, we'll start from the top down and starting with the whole printer itself. Now this printer does come flat packed in a box. Assembly isn't too difficult. It does come with a full manual that covers most of the assembly steps. There are full videos as well online for assembling the printer. So if you do find the manual lacking, I definitely recommend you check out YouTube. There are plenty of assembly guides for this printer and to ensure that you assemble it correctly. Assembly time for me came in at roughly about an hour and a half from the time I unboxed it to the time it was doing its first print. This was during a recent live stream, so there was of course chatting with the audience. If you've built printers before, I can definitely see this being a sub one hour build. And if you haven't built a 3D printer before, I definitely recommend you book off the afternoon just to ensure that you're not rushing the build. Now the printer itself is a standard i3 Mendel style printer. What that means is your gantry moves in the Z axis your hot end assembly moves in the X axis and the bed moves in and out on your Y axis. The print volume is 220 by 220 by 250 and it does come with a heated bed. Now for its cost, I do find the build volume is quite adequate, especially for a newbie in 3D printing. Most prints can definitely fit on a bed of this size and most larger scale prints can easily be broken down into multiple parts and be printed over multiple prints. And now we'll move on to the hot end assembly. Now the hot end on this printer is a relatively simple setup. It has two fans. It has a 4010 blower fan. This is for part cooling and a 4010 radial fan for hot end cooling. The hot end itself is a Mark 8 style with a PTFE liner. This is not an all metal hot end. What that means is if you are going to be trying to print hotter temperature materials such as ABS, you are going to run into issues with noxious fumes and off gassing from the PTFE liner when it heats up beyond a certain point. So if you are going to want to print those plastics, I definitely recommend that you swap out either the heat break or the hot end assembly itself to ensure that you have a full metal hot end. Now, one lacking thing with the hot end assembly is it does only have the one 4010 blower fan for part cooling. So it only blows on one side of the print for part cooling. Depending on the object you are printing, this may not be an issue. However, you do have to take care to orientate your parts so that the parts that need the most cooling, such as overhangs, face towards the part fan. And depending on the geometry of the print, you may not be able to always do this. So I wish this hot end assembly did have two part cooling fans or at least a larger cooling fan with a duct system to properly envelop the nozzle when printing. Um, this really isn't a deal breaker, but this is one of the things that could be improved on the printer. 
Now another nice little feature that this printer has is while it doesn't come with any automated bed leveling system, it does have two drilled and tapped holes in the hot end mount plate. These can be used to easily add one in the future. Now the hot end assembly moves on V-wheels and all motion on this printer runs on V-wheels. Now in my opinion, V-wheels do rank lower than linear rails and linear rods when it comes to motion systems for a 3D printer. The reason for that is you are fully relying on the aluminum extrusions for accuracy of the motion and aluminum extrusions can come easily bent from the factory or twisted. Also, you do have to ensure that the tension on the wheels to the extrusions is correct. If the wheels are too tight to the extrusion, you will wear away the wheels. If, if your wheels are too loose, they will be a little bit wobbly and you're gonna have print defects from that. Now moving from the hot end, you can see this is a Bowden style extruder setup. And moving on to the extruder itself, this is one of the things that I am sort of disappointed with with this printer and is an area that is lacking and could be improved. Now the extruder on the Ender 3 is a very simple setup and is very common with most entry level 3D printers. The drive gear is a straight tooth drive gear attached directly to the extruder motor and it does have a curved bearing for an idler. Now the downside to this setup is the straight teeth do tend to cut into the filament. This can cause grinding and deformation of the filament. Luckily this one does have a curved idler instead of a smooth idler, so that is a minor upgrade. Now in my testing, I was lucky enough I didn't have any issues, however I have seen and I do know that filament grinding is a common issue with this extruder. I was lucky during testing that I didn't run into too many issues with the extruder. However, when you are printing objects that have a lot of retractions, you do run the risk of grinding your filament. And also when you are printing softer materials, you do also have a chance of it failing to extrude properly with this style of extruder. Another minor issue too with this style of setup is since the drive gear is attached directly to the extruder, in my case here for example, the extruder motor does get quite hot and that heat can be transferred into the drive gear, which if you're printing very slowly or you are printing an object with a lot of retractions where the filament tends to stay near the drive gear for a little bit of time, that heat can transfer into the filament and this can also cause filament grinding issues. So the extruder setup, while it does work, is a very basic form of extruder and I would like to see something like this improved and this would probably be one of the first upgrades most people do on this printer. Now next to the extruder we do have our lead screw. Now this printer only has a single lead screw for Z drive and on a printer this size it's not too much of an issue. Now on my Ender 3 here with a single lead screw I didn't run into any issues however if you do make modifications to your printer in the future such as making the hot end assembly heavier by moving the extruder onto it for example to make a direct feed setup you may run into issues where your gantry starts to tilt down further away from the lead screw as it is unsupported and relying entirely on tension from the v-wheels to keep things aligned so that may be something you'll have to look into in the future however with the stock setup it really doesn't cause any issues. And moving down from the gantry, you can see all of our wires are sleeved. However, I did find, especially right out of the box, depending on how your printer was packed, these wires did have a tendency to move into the print volume and catch on the bed during operation. So the printer does come with a bunch of zip ties, and I do recommend taking the time to manage your wires and make sure that they aren't catching on anything, especially rubbing on the bed when the printer is operational. And speaking of the bed, the Ender 3 V2 does come with a glass bed with a carborundum print surface. In my opinion, this is actually a very good option, especially for a printer in this price point. Unfortunately, with a lot of these entry-level printers, the thin aluminum beds do have a tendency to warp over time, and some even come warped directly out of the box. So by using a glass bed, this helps thicken up the bed assembly itself and makes it much more stiff and less prone to warping over time. So you should be able to actually get more life out of your bed before it starts to warp by having this glass bed. Now there is no ABL on the printer by default. So when it comes to leveling, you are gonna to have to use the four knobs to adjust your bed level manually. And with the glass bed, mine came out perfectly flat and I never had any issues with first layers once I had the bed properly leveled. Now in front of the bed and on the gantry itself, you can see we do have some knobs here. These come standard with the Ender 3 V2. On other variants of the Ender, such as the base model Ender 3, these are commonly printed and added on later by the user. But what these knobs allow you to do is easily adjust the belt tension on your printer. 
And this is one of those great quality of life upgrades on the V2 that should be included with all printers, no matter what, is the ability to adjust your belt tension easily. Having improperly tensioned belt is one of the biggest causes of print quality issues I've seen, especially with those unfamiliar on what is causing issues with their printer. So being able to easily adjust your belt tension by simply turning a knob does make this a much easier printer to tune out of the box. Now also on the front here, you can see we do have our micro SD card reader here. This is for transferring files onto the printer. We have this little tray here, and this is for, I guess, storing your tools. I don't use it. I'd rather not have loose items rattling around in my printer while it's operating. And on the far right here, you can see our control screen. Now the control screen on this printer is a color LCD screen. It is not a touch screen though. So you still are gonna have to use the knobs to make your selections. And this is one of the upgrades on the V2 that I am kind of met about compared to other entry level printers. While having a big color screen can be nice, compared to a standard 12864 screen that is quite common on entry level printers and even on the Prusa Mark III for example, this accomplishes the exact same thing. You're still using a knob to make your selections and it's simply displaying information, only now it's colorful and large. It also hangs off the side of the printer itself, increasing its footprint, which depending on your situation when it comes to where you're putting your printer may be an issue. Also the viewing angles on the screen aren't the greatest. If you have some overhead lighting and you're not perfectly faced directly on with the screen, you may not be able to read the screen at all. Personally, I would have liked to see the money that they spent on the color LCD screen and the useless little tool storage tray be put into something like improving the extruder on the default printer. That would have been much more beneficial because a better extruder will help your printer print better and more reliably while a color LCD screen really doesn't do much but tell you that the bed is at temperature but with color. Now moving under the printer, the first thing you're gonna have to do is ensure that the correct voltage for your region is selected before you plug it in and turn it on. And this is a 24 volt printer. What that means is your bed's gonna heat up better than a 12 volt printer and your hot end's gonna heat up better than a 12 volt printer. 24 volt printers, in my opinion, are safer as well because they require less amperage to run the bed and the heater assembly. The wires can be a little bit thinner and motors run cooler, quieter, and better at the higher voltage. Now the controller board on the printer is a custom Creality 32-bit board. It does feature TMC228 drivers for silent operation. Now while this is a decent controller board and I do understand some of the design decisions because of the price point of this printer, it is lacking in some features that I would like to see. For example, the TMC2208 drivers do support adjusting motor current over UART control on the controller board, and this can be done via your firmware. However, this board lacks that feature, so any adjustments to motor current, such as if you decide to swap out any of these motors and they run at a different amperage, you are gonna have to go in there with a screwdriver and adjust a potentiometer using a multimeter to ensure that you are setting the correct voltage for your new motors. Another feature that I really wish this controller had would be a second MOSFET so you can control two fans instead of just the one. This would allow you to have your hot end fan automatically kick on when the hot end is in operation instead of being continuously on from the moment the printer turns on. As it is right now, the loudest thing on this printer is the hot end fan. And unfortunately, whenever the printer is on, this fan is running. So adding a second CNC fan to the controller board would have been a great benefit for multiple reasons. One, it would have prolonged the life of the hot end fan because it won't be running continuously. And two, this would make the printer completely silent when it's standby waiting for a print. I like to leave my printers on all the time. They all run with their hot end fans that turn on when the printer is actually printing at something. So this way I can easily upload a file to them and start a print in another room. This printer right here, I leave off simply because I don't want the fan running 24 seven. Now for the wiring itself under the hood here, everything is quite clean. Everything is managed and bundled up. One thing I would have liked to see though is, you can see there is this trench cut out of the extrusion here for the wires to pass through. This doesn't have any sort of wire protection or grommet on it. Now the edges are mostly chamfered. There is a few sharpish edges still. And if any of these wires were to rub and 
touch bare metal, we would have an issue where the printer could become electrified and dangerous. Now, I really wish they would have spent a little bit more time and money to put some sort of grommet around this cut here, just to ensure that that doesn't happen. Luckily, none of these wires do move. However, the next time I take this printer apart, I will be going in here and at least putting some sort of protection on the edges of the extrusion cuts. So those are some of my thoughts and opinions on the Ender 3 V2. I focus mostly on the printer itself. Now I did do multiple test prints and I will show some of those prints here. However, this video was mostly about the printer and not what it can do because honestly, it's an entry level 3D printer. The quality is very good for an entry level 3D printer. I didn't have any major issues with it in operation either. It was pretty much 100% reliable. The only real issues I had with this printer during printing were details that were small and had small surface areas didn't really like to stick to the bed. So by the end, I simply started printing with a brim and everything was fine from that point on. Now, the pros on this printer definitely do outweigh the cons. The Ender 3 V2 is a great entry-level printer into the 3D printing hobby. The price point of it is very attractive. Yes, it is missing some of the bells and whistles of some fancier off-the-shelf printers, such as the Prusa Mark III or the R3D Daedalus, for example. And of course, it lacks a lot of the features of a fully custom DIY printer build, such as a Voron V2 with its automatic gantry trimming and quad Z drive. But this is an entry level printer. It's not gonna have all the bells and whistles. In fact, you're lucky it comes with headlights and a steering wheel. But what is there is a great value and a great stepping stone into the larger 3D printing community. It does have a lot of newbie friendly features such as the easy to do belt tensioning. It has a great community around it. And for those looking for something to tweak and mod down the line, it has plenty of support for that as well. You can easily add a bed probe to it. And with the printer being built out of aluminum extrusions, you can practically strap anything to it anywhere. So at the end of the day, when people ask me what kind of 3D printer should I get when I'm looking to get into the hobby, I'm still gonna recommend the Ender 3. Now I will say the Ender 3 V2, in my opinion, is probably the best value out of all the other Ender models out there. They do have larger variants and they do have variants with more features on it. However, when it comes to an entry level printer, this has pretty much everything you need without any wastefulness or added cost. Now the printer itself does come in at around $250 US. Yes, there are cheaper printers out there. However, they're usually lacking in features or have lower build quality. And yes, there are more expensive printers out there. But at the end of the day, this isn't the fastest printer in the world. It doesn't have the best print quality, but it's gonna be a great printer to learn on and a great printer to get you started with. So I hope you found this video informative. If you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. Now I know the Ender 3 has a thriving modding community and I will be keeping this printer stock for a little bit, but stay tuned because in the future, I will be doing some mods and changes to it to improve quality and reliability of the printer and to test out some other things with it as well. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can follow along with that and as well my printer builds and other projects on the go. If you're looking to get yourself an Ender 3 V2, I do have an affiliate link below through Banggood. That way you can get yourself a great entry level printer and help the channel out as well. And if you're looking to help out the channel in other ways, I do have links below in the description. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you and have a great day.